party, wouldn't it? I notice you're not trusting the clapper to me, which is sensible. Right. <laughs> and action. Action. Elizabeth is an enormous fan of Klimt, and how can you not be because his work is so awesome. And they almost have the same birthday, so that's really important, too. And, and I got to go to the Belvedere Gallery and see his original work just a couple of months ago. Oh, the oh. angels sing. It's an yeah. awesome thing. Yep. So... The fact that we have another Klimt collection for you should not come as a surprise because mm. she does love him so much. This time we're calling them Klimt Freeform Masks, but what you're getting is the mask, and this is the pieces have fallen out of here. You get the mask as well as the opening. Now when you look at this, once you take this piece out, you take these out, you're left with this really cool stencil. There are masks that rather than us cut them out for you and sell them loose. They're tab cut, you cut them out, and then you have the piece that you cut them out of and the piece that you cut out. So you get a two for one. It's definitely, and it's a usable two for one. We're not just throwing plastic at you to give you plastic. It's a usable two yeah, for one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will demonstrate how I used uh, both, uh, both pieces and parts in my design. Put your artistic thinking cap on and go to town with it. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff, so yeah. wanna show we, them how to do let's it? Let's go do it, all right. Before you can do anything with either the mask as you take it out or the stencil that's left behind, you need to clip the tabs. We deliberately had these cut in a way, I don't know what that is, we had these cut in a way where there's little tabs that hold the plastic in place. And the cool thing about this is that when you cut these out, some of these designs actually make pretty awesome stencils. So I kept looking at something that Elizabeth had done and I kept seeing these chunky pieces and I thought, what the heck is that? And I realized that it is the outline of this once the stencil is gone. So there is these little tabs and they are spaced kind of sporadically all the way around. I would urge you to cut them either with little scissors like I am or to cut them with an X-Acto knife. Do not try to tear these. You will be very unhappily surprised because the Mylar will tear. This is 10 mil and it's too thick to actually separate any other way than by cutting or with a scissor or an X-Acto blade. And when you do this, again, whoops, there's one right there. I can see it, I just gotta get to it. When you do this, here's the mask and here's the stencil that's left behind. And again, that's this piece right here. So now that you know how to take them out, I'm just gonna quickly run through these because there are a couple that what's left behind is a really cool stencil that you'll want to use. So this is named Leaves. And again, this is a kind of a smaller version of the one that I used just a moment ago of Ferns. And again, you have this wonderful stencil that's left when you take all of those masks out. This one is named Spiral Looking Glass. And you can see that there's all these crazy spirals that want to play with you and get all tangled up. As you, I don't know if you saw the <laughs> social media thing that um, Elizabeth and Celia posted, but it was me holding up a whole tangle of these. It does require a moment to get them apart. And patience. I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> this one is named Spiral Seduction, and you can see it's this lovely pattern with the spirals and these other triangles on here. Very klimtish. This is named Spiral Tree, and this is another one that here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that when you get these untangled, I can see it. I just got to move it apart. When you get these separated, there's going to be a, I promise you it'll be worth it. There's going to be a really cool <laughs> stencil left. Oh, good grief. I would help you, but I'm the cameraman. I know your hands are full at the moment. <laughs> and I am, oh, there is blue air coming out of my mouth someplace here. <laughs> And this is what happens when you lay stuff down like that, which is why, and actually it's probably a good segue, when Elizabeth stores her, hers, she has them stored with pieces of transparent plastic between them, and that pretty much puts an end to this nonsense. It does. It's a, the hanging system that I have lays a clear piece of mylar between each stencil, and then I overlap them a little bit um, with about uh, two inches of the edge of each one showing. So you can see them through okay. the plastic and so they're organized so that you can see them, but they don't tangle. Okay, so coming back, this is Spiral Tree. So this is, well, it's all chakwad there, but there we go. So this is Spiral Tree. You can see the mask and then look at this awesome stencil that. that's left when you take this out. So this is so two for one. This is named Vine 
And again, you have this chunky monkey thing that's left. You don't have the detail in the center, but you have these wonderful curvy shapes. So these are the six designs, the stencil mask combos, that are part of the Klimt Freeform Masks series. Okay, so I'm super excited about these Freeform Klimt Masks. Um, I am going to be using several of them in this demo. So I've got two great big swirly ones, which are lots of fun. And then I've got two that are kind of like uh, his leaves and vines of leaves. And so I'm going to be using those. And then the other thing I'm going to use is the stencil portion, which is the what is left behind when you punch out the mask pieces. And so I'm going to use this in my uh, layered gel print as well. So let's see, the first thing I'm gonna do is a layer of sky blue light. And I'm actually gonna make a ghost print with that stencil. So I'm gonna use the ghost print of the stencil. So I'm gonna roll out the sky blue. Wow, my gel plate is so clean. Barb, did you notice that? I know, and you picked the squeaky brayer. Oh yeah, the so squeaky brayer. You. Yeah, we, <laughs> we said we were gonna get WD-40 last time, we never did, and it's still squeaking. Yeah. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put that down, and then I'm just gonna use a, a blank sheet uh, to remove the paint out of this so that I can get the ghost print. So I'm taking the paint out of the openings, and I'm gonna go for the ghost print. You wanna make sure you get all the paint out so you have a good ghost print. Then I'm gonna lift that up. And I'm going to use a new sheet of paper. This is going to be my print. So I'm going to print that light blue. So here we have the first layer, the light blue ghost print of the stencil. All right. So then the next thing I'm going to do is put out some yellow and Probably should roll this off a little bit to clean some of the blue out of that brayer. And then we're gonna get a yellow layer and apply these fun swirly things. Okay, so I'm gonna lay them in a direction where they're sort of fitting together a little bit I like that that looks pretty good looks great and then I'm going to take this again and layer that over this one so now my yellow is going to blend with my blue but these uh, masks that I just put on are going to also leave me some white paper in those openings so again, if you don't get a good impression inside those spirals, you just need to apply a little bit more pressure with your fingertips. So before you pull the print off, just give those spirals a little a peek and an extra rub. So here, now you see we've saved some white in the openings of the first layer and we've created green with the layering of the yellow and the blue. All right, so now I'll have ghost prints of these, which are kind of a... a a bummer to just wipe off. So I'm going to come back to this original cleanup sheet or whatever you want to call it. This one, which is not the print that I'm intentionally making, but I'm going to pull those and I'm getting something unique and interesting with this as well. So we're kind of making a two for one. So I'm not going to worry about cleaning, uh, the plate. I'm just going to go ahead and put some, um, red orange on here. I think it's pyrrole, naphthol, red medium. And I'm gonna use the same brayer with the yellow in it because yellow and red are both warm colors, so it's not gonna affect it. But if it had the brayer had blue in it, we wouldn't wanna do that because that would dull the red right down. So, okay, so we've got that. And then now I'm gonna make, I'm gonna utilize the ghost prints of these uh, leafy ones. And I think I need to grab a couple more. Let's put this one in there too, Barb. We didn't use this one last time, but I like this one. So I'm gonna yeah, do that. There's a little bit of empty space there. So I'm gonna lay this one off the edge and you can always do that. You can always lay, you know, take advantage of the spiral at the end of one and lay the rest of it off the edge. Um, there's nothing that says you have to use the full length. 
So I'm gonna actually gonna get another one of these for visual interest and put that, so let's just run it off the side of the plate like that, just so that you can see that's always an option. Uh, so there's lots of ways. Lots of them. So now I've filled in my negative spaces. And again, this is my unintended print. And I wanna use this so that I can get the ghost print of these masks. So I'm just taking all the paint out of the negative spaces here. This print will be interesting as well, but the one that I'm really um, working toward is the, the other one. But you never know. You know, sometimes the things that you don't intend come out better than the things that you do, right? All right, so again, these little openings, you wanna make sure you apply a little extra pressure, look up, uh, lift up and peek and make sure that you've got um, the paint in the openings. Look at that, that is tons of fun. That's pretty awesome. That's probably gonna be the... better than the one I'm working on. Yeah, that's the waste print, right? Yeah. Um, okay, and speaking of that, I wanna get a little bit more of this red off of the background here. So we have a clean ghost print. So we're gonna lift these up now to reveal the ghost print. And then I'm gonna bring my intended print back and print those red orange ghost prints on top. There we go. Ooh, and you know what? Where the red went over the blue, it almost looks a little bit purple. Look at that. How pretty is that? That came out fabulous. Look yes. at that. That is so much fun with the layering. And the little bit of extra sort of halo effect around here from the uh, paint that was left on the plate outside, that just gives it like a soft painterly look. Yep. So really nice uh, layering there. A little bit of white that uh, remains from those big openings, which I really like. It brightens up this print. And um, lots of layers of, of um, spirally patterns. And uh, super happy with how that came out. Yeah, all good stuff. All good stuff. Now, I also want to share with you uh, some prints that I made while we were messing around with these yesterday. So here's another one where I use those big openings. I love the play of the teal and the red orange here. There's another one with another in that similar palette. Then I uh, created this one very similarly with a different palette. And I kind of went in there a little bit and doodled with some gold metallic Posca pens. Oh, yeah. So see you can now. see that in there. And, um, that's an option for some of these open areas. And, and the Posca pen uh, sat up on there really nicely. And I just doodled spirals. Everybody can do a spiral. Everybody can do a spiral. So I was really into this color palette. Um, then I tried to create something that looked a little bit more Klimptish. So I created this one, played a little bit with gold and black, came back to the layers of that. This one's a lot of fun. Uh, this is another one in the similar I like that one. Steps. There's something to do with the grungy background there where the, the yellow and the turquoise kind of poke through at each other. Yeah. This is one of my favorites. This is another bit of that, the soft. So that's an example of where I didn't get everything off of the plate in the negative spaces of the ghost print. So it gave me some soft edges. This one, the uh, the little, uh, those big openings ended up on top with an opaque paint color. And this is just multiple layers of the spirals. So we had tons of fun playing with these yesterday and came out with some really great prints. But um, now that you know the step-by-step -step of it, I hope that you will try this one yourself. And along the way, I hope you'll come up with a lot of other interesting combinations. Elizabeth has shown you how to work and gel print with the new Klimt Freeform masks, but I don't want to lose sight of the fact that sprays work beautifully with them. So this is an example of something I was just playing with the other day. It was all done with Tim's mica stains, so it's nice and shimmery. And here I have a white background and I just laid the masks down and I sprayed over them with a variety of the mica stains. What I want to show you now, and this is more about technique rather than making something pretty, what I want to show you now is how I can take, let's, let's just use two of these. I don't want to overthink this, but how I can take two of the masks, I'm going to lay them down and I'm going to spray them and then I'm going to pick them up, print what's on the top, but then I'm going to spray them again. And that'll make sense as I go along. So I've got three colors of oxide sprays and I have one of the mica stains because I can't help myself. So I'm going to start with, this is Twisted Citron. 
and I have peacock feathers. I'm just gonna go along and give them a little bit of a shake, take the caps off, and then I'm going to spray. Woo, look at that. I know, right? So oh pretty. Oh my God in heaven, look at that. I know. Those let's, colors. I know. So let's just put, because she's I like, can. She's like, be quiet, Elizabeth. No, 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 she's like, <laughs> I can't help myself. I have to put some mica stain on there. Oh, okay. so pretty. I know, green and you can't, it just works. So now Ooh. I have all of this with a black background, and that's the difference because I started on a black index card. This is a five by seven black, smooth, and sturdy index card. So you have this, which is really pretty, and when that dries, you'll be able to see all of the shimmer in the mica stain that I couldn't help myself. Let's just mop this up quickly. We're using our nonstick craft sheet, yes, so everything just wipes off. Yes. And you forgot to say that black adds drama. You're right. When I'm look, see, and that's one thing. I think I filmed a video years ago that said when you're looking to add drama, black is really the way to do it. So if I turn this over, and I go ahead and print what's on here, like so that. spray side down. Yep, spray side down. What I want to do is take advantage of what's on there. Okay. and just turn this kind of like this and we'll let this fall off. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. The goal here, in order to get what's on the other side of this to really print on that black, you have to press it real well. You gotta make certain that that wet comes in contact with the surface you're trying to put it on. Now I'm not gonna take these off and I'm gonna kind of hold this. Ordinarily, I would pick these up and we'd all go, oh. ooh, look how pretty that is, right? Yeah. But here's another step that you can do instead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, this is picked raspberry. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna spray this over the top. So now I have this solid pink and when I pick these up, underneath oh. are other colors. And how cool is that? Look at that. And you can do this with stencils too, but I often don't wow. think to do it with masks, but it's really, really cool because now you get multicolor. You have the black, adding the drama in the background, but you've got color on top of it where the masks were because it transferred, and then you've got all that pink that I put on there. So these masks and stencils, these combos, these freeform climped masks that Elizabeth designed can be used in all kinds of projects, whether you're just spraying, you're printing, or you know what? Nobody says you cannot put sprays on a gel plate because you can. Right. So there you go, we've given you a bajillion options. <laughs> Ready as I'm gonna be. <laughs> this is the first video of many that we are filming together, so we're, we're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. By yeah. the end, we'll be tired and dragging. Yeah, there'll be big dark circles on our eyes, and it's just, <laughs> it won't be good. But, and it'll be dark in the windows back there. Yeah, but all of this work is all good stuff, and it means that we get to share it with you, which is always really exciting. And it's really what our goal is here, is to give you ideas and products that you can work with and suggestions. So, and we just did a whole bunch of suggestions. And inspiration. Yeah. So yeah, I'm loving this print. Um, I think you could, uh, you know, I use these prints in collage, but they would be great as gift wrap or something for mobiles or prayer flags or card making or who knows what. Whatever you can think of, I think you can do. And in my case, I print it on our five by seven index cards. This is an A7 card size. You have to just shove this in a five by seven envelope and you're good to go. And I did show you this. So this is nice and shiny because it's all done with Tim's mica stains. So you can lay it out on a page spread like this. You can, I mean, the sky's the limit. All you need to do is just let loose, let those inhibitions go and just play. Spray, print, get some paint out, make a little bit of a mess and have a really good time. And try not to be frustrated by the tangling of the spirals. Oh yeah. There's <laughs> there that. There is that, yeah. <laughs> Before we forget, when you share this kind of stuff on social yes. media, please use the create with joggles hashtag, or you can tag us at, at joggles or you are at paper paintings. They're large. Yes. I think. I have no idea. <laughs> You'll, you'll find me. Yeah, you'll find her. Yeah, at Paper Paintings Collage. Yeah, and so share that with us. We want to see it, but we want you to share it with all of the folks who watch our stuff so that you can all bounce ideas off of one another because that's part of what this is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.